This is Brent with Lycans Motorsports, and we are getting ready to assemble these AFR 185cc heads for our 311 cubic inch dyno mule. I uh, went ahead and had deck surface um, milled down, and uh, we took 20 thousandths off of it. And uh, I'll have to run a uh, deburr around the combustion chambers, but we'll do that after a while. And uh, we're getting ready to mock up our valves. And uh, actually, I'll probably uh, lap those in first. And then we'll do some uh, install height mock-up with, with this setup. So I went through and, and hand-lapped all of these. And um, we went over the valve weights last time. Uh, these are pretty, white, pretty light. Uh, valves 202 16s, 1130 sec. Uh, I'm sorry, 516 stem. Um, we're going to be using uh, these pack springs off of uh, JJ, the 352, and the spirit of JJ lives on in the valve springs. And uh, I was able to get some matching uh, valve spring retainers, titanium retainers. These have the mini eight degree angles and also some pack radius lifestick with them so we're going to go through load all of our valves in and check some install heights with these new products okay so um this is not the original cam that i had purchased for this engine i, I did get another one and uh, we're going off a of valve lift so or i'm sorry lobe lift so we're at a, a 427 which is a, a very good number for us ford guys 427 times um, our rocker ratio of 17 be 725 and we are at 16,000 slash so we're going to be aiming for about 710 on our lift so we're going to set these springs up uh, with that in mind and uh, I'm going to grab retainer and a pair of locks and uh, a spring pressure tester or a spring uh, install height my goodness a spring height micrometer there we go and uh, we're going to see where we start off at so we're coming up with uh, an inch 830 on our install height when i put the spring and the retainer in, the, in my pressure tester uh, it's a little on the light side, um, and when I chuck it down to 1,800, then we are at 250 pounds seat, 670 pounds open, which um, gives me a little bit uh, fuzzier feeling on the seat pressure. And uh, this is a really, uh, probably one of the most aggressive lobes that Comp has in their lobe catalog, so I want the extra spring pressure, especially on the seat. But um, I'm going to set these up at, at 1-800. So um, it'll take me probably an hour or so, but it'll just take you guys a second. And I'm going to go through and um, even all these out to 1-800. All right, after I uh, made that last video, I did some pondering of life and thought, uh, with these lobes being as aggressive as they are, it would be nice to have a little bit more spring pressure. So I took, um, I want to do just a little bit more, shorten it up a little bit. And uh, this will put me at 275 and about 700 pounds. So um, I'm expecting a lot of RPM. And um, like I said, these are the most uh, aggressive solid roller lobes that Comp has in their catalog. So um, I'm not going to take any chances. So I'm going to go ahead and set them up like this. I just want to stop and make note of this. I mean, you know, higher quality products, look at the, um, look at how they're packaged. Instead of being thrown in a bag or loose in a bag or in a clamshell or whatever, all of these packed titanium retainers are in a nice little foam cutout box. You know, these things aren't expensive, but you know, you get what you pay for. Let's also take a second to admire the weight of this stuff. This is a typical steel retainer for 
like a 1500 or 1550 valve spring. Ten grams on the retainer, on the titanium retainer. Thirty, almost thirty-one for the steel. Here's a normal pair of ten-degree steel bead lock valve locks. Ten degree, six and a half grams. Mini eight, four and a half grams. Good weight savings. Okay, so we've got all of our install heights um, matched up with shims. Um, pretty much all the intake valves used a 60,000 shim. All the exhausts used a 15, and that's how close they were. Just a good valve job and good parts on these AFR heads. So I've got my retainers and locks laid out as I took them off because these do vary um by a couple thousand so just keep those off of the valves that they that they that you measured them with so now we're going to get uh, all of our valves out and valve seals on and valves lubed up and installed and then uh, we're going to check our retainer to seal clearance and then it'll be time to put the springs on okay i often tell you pick a valve seal that goes on that easy. If you're hammering on them, they're the wrong seals. All right, so I always do this step, and it's always very critical, and here's why. Our cam is 710 lift net. When I measure in between the seal and the retainer, I'm getting 680 thousandths. So that means at full lift, retainer is going to be mashing this valve seal way down um, if not getting into the valve guy that's underneath of it so uh, we have two options and one option is to try another valve seal um, the trick flow viton seals sit much lower they don't have this part sticking up uh, so i'm gonna try to set of those if that doesn't work then we're gonna have to go to a standard valve lock and get that retainer back up, um, which can pose another problem because obviously you lose 50 thousandths of um, spring pressure, whatever your spring rate is, which isn't good. So uh, let's try the valve seal first. All right, so this has been, um, I guess, a fiasco. And um, I was going off of the retainer to seal clearance on the intake side. I ordered some standard valve locks, thinking it would get me 50 thousandths more clearance. But then I went ahead and measured an exhaust side and the valves aren't as sunk as much as they are on the intake side, and it's very noticeable when you start to measure in between the retainer and the seal. Um, the different seals did not work, and um, even with standard locks, I am at 20 thousandths, and you know, I know I've run 40 and 50 before, and this is a, this is a situation I've, I've never really had to sit and um, struggle over before. But most people, and I called a couple of engine builder buddies that I trust, and they, they said that they would just go 50 as well. Um, so, uh, you know, if I want to make this work, even with the standard height lock, I am looking at having to run a one five rocker ratio and I just don't wanna do that. Um, killing the ratio kills your valve acceleration and um, I, just, I just don't wanna get into that. So at this point I have, I guess, two options. 
the first option would be to put it together the way it is and have another cam ground with a little bit less lift. I looked at some flow numbers for these heads. They, they tend to peter out at 600 lift anyway. So um, I don't necessarily know what a 700 lift cam would do for me if it would do anything. The other option is buy a whole new set of valves with extended length and then I'd have to get into a valve job and, and, and all that sort of thing. So, if, uh, if this were a customer engine, it would be one thing. Since it's um, a test engine for me, uh, I consider it something else. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put everything together. And I'm going to order another cam. So, Right or wrong, that's uh, what I've decided on. I've, I've spent a day <laughs> thinking about my options. And um, I've got some, I got a busy week coming up. So I just want to get these heads put together and set aside. So that's what I want to do. All right, so we got them assembled. Good looking heads. I'm going to, uh, got a spark plug in here. And um, I'm gonna CC a chamber now. What you have to watch out for on some of these small block four and small block, uh, I think even some of the small block Chevrolet stuff runs into this, but when you cut the heads, it can leave the valve proud of the deck surface. So when you use um, your, your plate that goes over here for CCing, uh, the plate needs to be notched. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go back over with my deburring tool and uh, take the sharp edges off the combustion chamber where the head's been cut and then uh, this head will be done and I can start on the other one. So if you have a really good valve job and everything is concentric and smooth and uh, the way it needs to be, this is what you should see see a valve bounce. So we are looking at an assembled pair of AFR 185cc heads. And I guess I'm going to go in now and um, get out my lobe catalog and see what we can do about another cam. Um, I guess that's shame on me for uh, not double checking everything before I order the cam. But um, on most of these AFR 185cc head builds that I do, you know, I'm usually running like a 600 lift hydraulic roller or something like that because these are fairly small heads and they're usually put on, you know, 400 cubic inch engines, uh, 363 cubic inch, cubic inch engines, something like that. But for uh, <clears throat> a very small engine like a 302, this is going to be on the upper, upper end of uh, intake port volume. So you kind of have to buy the head to fit, to fit the application and then change the parts to, um, you know, complement everything else that you have going on. But uh, I'll get another cam ordered and that'll be on me. But uh, just take this as a, uh, I guess, an admonishment on, you know, double check all your measurements. Don't take anything for granted. Um, you know, if I had just slapped that together, without checking the um, retainer to seal clearance, I would have been in for a world of hurt later on. So, with that being said, I'm gonna sign off. Uh, thank you for um, uh, watching, and please hit that subscribe button. And uh, we're gonna have many more videos coming up. Uh, this special pro uh, project didn't come in this past week, 
the gentleman that was going to send the parts had COVID. So hopefully we'll get those in the next couple weeks. But uh, stay tuned for some very cool things um, coming down. Hope you all are warmer than I am. It was 7 degrees yesterday morning. But uh, hope you have a good rest of the weekend and uh, a good week.